This YCN segment is brought to you by Mount Sunapee Resort. Fun for all seasons. Welcome to YCN's Game of the Week. Tonight, YCN travels to Bellows Falls, Vermont for today's gridiron clash between the host Bellows Falls Terriers and the visiting Colonels of Brattleboro in this VPA cross-division football showdown. YCN Game of the Week is brought to you by Echo Communications, a digitally integrated commercial printer and mailer located in New London, New Hampshire. Remontos in Claremont, always fresh, always delicious. HR Clough and Kearsarge Heating, your local energy specialists. La Valley Building Supply, home improvement and construction from concept to completion. And by Top Stitch Embroidery, the best for your team and so much more. Good evening and welcome to Hadley Field in Westminster, Vermont for this week's YCN Game of the Week. I'm Jeremy Stout. I'll be joined shortly by Andrew Zerheide. And tonight we have a matchup of teams who are coming off different results in their opening game. First, we'll go to the Brattleboro Colonels who had a tough opening match against Rutland. They missed the playoffs last season, looking to bounce back tonight against the home Bellows Falls Terriers, who are defending champs of Division II, 10-1 last year, looking to continue that this year and go 2-0. And, oh. and Andrew, as we get set for this game, first a couple key players to watch on the Brattleboro team. Yeah, so on the Brattleboro side, we're going to be keeping an eye on quarterback sophomore Tyler Millerick. Look for to him to be throwing the ball a lot tonight. And number three, Chris Carroll, the running back, also a defensive back. Look for him to be punching the ball into the end zone. And on the Bellows Falls Terriers, a big win last week against Spalding, and they're looking to defend their home field in the opening matchup of this season. Who should we look for? Yeah, so on that side, we'll be looking at number three, Logan Cota, the senior quarterback, also does some running. And number 22, Shane Clark. He had a big week last week with four rushing touchdowns. Look for him to be a big force in tonight's game. All right, it's the Colonels and the Terriers. YCN Game of the Week. It's next. This YCN segment is brought to you by Lake Sunapee Visiting Nurse Association and Hospice. Welcome back. Westminster, Vermont, for the opening kickoff as the Bellows Falls Terriers face the Brattleboro Colonels. And an exciting cross division matchup. Jeremy Stout, Andrew Zerhide on the call tonight. YCN game of the week. Opening kickoff to about the 21 yard line. Watch it this way, Carol. Watch it this way, Chris. Handoff inside. Ball is loose. And it looks like they will keep possession, though, on the first play from scrimmage, fumbling. Well, luckily, able to corral the fumble and. He'll bring up second and 11 for the Terriers. Logan Coda behind center. Takes a snap, handoff off the right. Number 44, Spencer Clark on the carry, brings up third down. So Andrew, second game of the week last week, an exciting matchup down in North Sutton, New Hampshire between the Newport Tigers and the Kearsarge Cougars. Newport coming out on top, 14 to 12. And now we cross the Connecticut River in a Vermont matchup, which should be an exciting game tonight. As we go off left side, number 22, Shane Clark on the carry, and that'll be short of the first down marker. So Bellows Falls with the three and out, they'll be forced to punt on the opening possession. Yeah, and Shane Clark, one of the better running backs in the division. Had four touchdowns last week. Quarterback punt. The game against Spalding. A three and out there. Maybe they can get their offense rolling next time. Logan Cota, the quarterback, also the punter. He gets the kick away. Caught at the 39-yard line, breaks a few tackles, cuts across the field, 
trying to get some daylight. He is not able to get anywhere. Number 22, Chris Frost for the Colonels, and that will be Brattleboro football at their own 44-yard line. And we'd like to welcome our Facebook audience, Facebook Live, our second game of the week. First one able to get on Facebook. So thanks for tuning in live, and you can watch the replay of this one Saturday. So Brattleboro lines up in the shotgun pitch to the right side, off to Chris Frost, and he'll cut around the corner. Cross the first down marker and pushed out of bounds in front of his own bench. First down, Colonels. Nice shot by Frost there. Looked like he was going to go out of bounds, but a nice little spin move. Gained a few extra yards, got the first down. Brattleboro with a good start to their offense. And as we mentioned in the opening, Brattleboro not making the playoffs last year, finishing four and five. Bellows Falls finishing 10 and one, including their playoff wins, in the Division II state champs, and the fake handoff. Millerick keeps it, and he's able to gain a couple yards, second down and eight. Looked like that was number 50, Gunner Sawyer there. The junior on the tackle. Good job by the Terrier defense. So that'll bring up second and eight from the Bellows Falls 40 yard line. Colonels driving towards the end zone with the scoreboard on their first opening possession. Tipped ball, but completed out to number four. Jeremy Rounds with the catch. And that's short of the marker, but a nice pickup nonetheless. So that'll bring up third down and about four. Tune in every week for YCN Sports Talk, focusing on our region's college and professional sports with the Salt Hill Pub NFL Picks of the Week and YCN Sports Wrap of High School Varsity Sports. If you're watching this game on Sunday, both shows follow at 2 and 2.30 p.m. Check your local listings for other air times. Little trickery there, pitch to Chris Carroll. He cuts it back against the grain, and he's able to get the first down. So the pitch from Millerick to Carroll. Enough for the first down and moving the chains nicely out of the Colonels in the early going. Yeah, the Colonels definitely coming into this game as the underdogs. So far, looking great. Defense. Well, Bellows falls with three now, and offense really moving the ball. Miller can the shotgun. He'll keep it. Rolls out to his right, looking downfield, but he's going to keep it. And he gets around the corner, then pushed out of bounds. Looking at the ref, asking what about the late head, and he's not going to get the call. Bring up second down and about six. If you're interested in advertising on any of YCN's programs or networks or might want your local event televised, contact us at info at ycnnow.com. So that'll bring up second and six for the Colonels. Millerick. Handoff, keeps it, fakes the handoff and keeps it himself, but a nice defensive effort there by the Terriers. A couple defenders in there making the tackle. Yeah, that was uh, Gunnar Stoyer there again on this. It's like about a sack. I mean, well, they blew through the offensive line of the Colonels. They did a nice play. Now third and eight. Let's see what the Colonels decide to do here. And you might think it is a four down territory. So yeah. if you are head coach Chad Pacheco, you might want to pick up four or five yards here and get into fourth and manageable. So Millerick's going to drop back looking, has time. Oh. Has a couple men open and it is caught in the end zone. Number four, Jeremy Rounds with the touchdown catch. And there's a flag on the play. What a nice play. Millerick buying time in the pocket and finds rounds in the end zone. Flag on the play, but it's going to be roughing the passer, so that will be declined, and they'll 
Wow. Take the result of the play. Touchdown. Colonel's up 6-0 early. Well, what a job by Millerick. Really bought some more time in the pocket and looked composed even though the defense was right in his face and made a perfect toss to Jeremy Rounds. Rounds made a nice move to kind of juke back to the left of the end zone. Made a great catch. He was well defended, but still hauled it in. Colonel's looking great. And the extra point is up and good. So, after a nice stop by the Colonels, forcing Bellows Falls to the three and out, they take the ball back at their own 40-yard line, drive 60 yards down the field, and take the early lead, 7-0, with 7.01 to play in the first quarter. We'll take a break. You're watching the YCN Game of the Week. This YCN segment is brought to you by MJ Harrington and Company, jewelers and designers since 1948. Welcome back, YCN Game of the Week. Jeremy Stout, Andrew Zerhide, and the Brattleboro Colonels with the touchdown and the roughing the passer call uh, in, in high school. The penalty still counts. They, they count the touchdown, the roughing the passer counts, and so they'll kick from the 45 yard line of the Terriers. Kick is up and fielded in the end zone, that's going to be touchback, not able to carry that one back, Logan Coda. So the Terriers will set up with their second offensive possession. Hey local sports fans, 94.5 ESPN's Franklin and House Sports Talk Show can be seen on YCN's WYCX outside television at 5 p.m. every weekday. Tune in daily to get up to date on what's happening in sports. So now at the 20 yard line where the Terriers will take over, first and 10. Coda under center, he has two, or excuse me, three backs behind him, one directly behind him and then two split off and the handoff Ooh. goes up the middle, wow. number 22, Shane Clark, and he's got some daylight, Ooh. jukes one defender, and then he's finally chased down by his second defender, number 80, Brendan Gilbo. And the tackle inside the Colonel 35 yard line, first down for the Terriers. And we'll take another look at that one as he breaks free. And then just at the end of the play, Jukes one defender, which helps him gain some extra yardage, but then the second defender is able to catch up. So first down at the 34 for the Terriers. Coda with a double fake, and then he'll keep it off the right side. He's trying to stretch the edge. He gets to the edge, jumps over one defender, oh. and then he makes two defenders miss. He's still going, and he's finally brought down, but not before a big gain, moving the chains, and Bellows Falls just like that, two plays. They're inside the red zone. Yeah, well, you saw their two best players, Logan Coda and Shane Clark, really stepping up there. Two big plays. Both are very elusive runners. Making a lot of defenders miss. And Coda, yeah, not afraid of contact. He was going for a touchdown there, came up just short, but still, what a great run. So first and goal from just outside the five yard line. Coda under center, and he hands it off to the up man who's gang tackled. Able to gain a few yards there, so that'll bring up second and goal from the two yard line. Today's game is being brought in part by Top Stitch Embroidery, the best for your team and so much more. Thank all of our advertisers for their support. So Logan Coda, the senior quarterback under center. He's gonna keep it himself on the sneak. Moves the pile, but not quite enough. And it is enough, touchdown, Terriers. So Logan Coda with the two yard sneak and the Terriers with the touchdown, they come within one extra point pending. Nice job by Coda, just ducking his head and plowing forward with the rest of his offensive line. Nothing too crazy about that play. Looks like it caught the Colonels a little bit off guard. Nice job by the Terriers responding when the Colonels got an early touchdown. Let's see if they can tie the game up here with the extra point. So Logan Coda will be kicking the extra point, trying to tie this game up. And the Ooh. fake pitches it over his head to Coda. Coda spinning through some defenders, but he's not able to get it in as he's stopped well short of the goal line. So a little trickery here in the early going. The extra point 
fake. They don't get the conversion. So with 5.29 to go, Colonels still lead the Terriers 7-6. to six. We'll take a break. You're watching the YCN Game of the Week. This YCN segment is brought to you by H.R. Clough and Kearsarge Heating, your local energy specialist. Welcome back. YCN Game of the Week. Jeremy Stout, Andrew Zerhide. As the Bellows Falls Terriers miss the two-point conversion, a little trickery there, and the Colonels up 7-6. Kick is away. Fielded inside the 20-yard line, and the Colonels will bring it back to about the 33, 34-yard line, where they'll set up for their second drive tonight as they scored an opening drive touchdown, surprising this Bellows Falls squad and their fans going up 7-0 in a contest where they could be big underdogs, but they're not showing that tonight. Stay tuned at the end of our telecast for the HR Clough Kearsarge Heating turning up the heat player of the game. So Brattleboro will set up here with first and 10 from the 30 four yard line. Millerick in the shotgun. He's going to pitch out to the outside. Number 22, Chris Frost gets the carry. Cuts the edge. Not quite able to get all the way around the corner, but a nice gain. Maybe about five yards on the gain, but a penalty on the field. Looks like that penalty will be on Brattleboro. Holding penalty, so they'll replay first down after they march the yardage off. Brings it all the way back to the 24 yard line. Brattleboro has to get to the 44, so first and 20, first and 19 as they move the ball up to the 25. So first and 19. Millerick in the shotgun, empty backfield, four wide, five wide really. Tight end in there, Millerick rolling out to his right. Oh. And it's picked off, number three on the pickoff, Logan Coda, and he returns it inside the 15 yard line for the Terriers. Nice job by Coda. Reading the Colonels quarterback's face the whole way. And it looked like that was number 54, Jared Zub. Jared Z, I'll say. He was providing pressure on Colonels quarterback and forced him to roll out to his right. And Millerick kind of telegraphed that pass there, looking right the whole way as he yep. scrambled. He rolled out right, he kind of had his eyes that direction the whole play, and Coda Read the QB's eyes and picked it off. Sets up for a first and 10 from 12 yard line. Coda with the keeper on the shotgun snap. He able, is able to cross the line of scrimmage. Gains a few yards, brings up second down. Today's game is being brought in part by Remontos in Claremont. Always fresh, always delicious. So the Terriers trying to capitalize on the turnover as they have second down and seven about the eight yard line. Coda hands it off. Up the middle is the ball carrier and he is not going too far. Good defensive penetration from the Colonels. So third down here and about five. Yeah, this would be a big stop for the Colonels' defense if they could hold them right here. It's definitely fourth down territory, but field goals are never automatic in high school. Inside four minutes to play. Third and five from the six-yard line for the Terriers. Handoff inside and not able to get anywhere is the ball carrier 47, Brady Clark. And a nice stand there by the Colonels. Fourth down and about four. We'll see if they decide to go for it here. Yeah, this would be a big missed opportunity for the Terriers if they're not able to put any points on the board after that interception. 
And Brattleboro could get some momentum back if they if they stop him here. See if they're kicking a field goal. No, nope. they are going to go for it. Lakota under center, three men behind him. He gives it to the second running back who plows through and lowers his shoulder. Touchdown 22 Shane Clark as the Terriers take the lead for the first time tonight. 12-7, extra point pending. Nice job by Bellows Falls there. Fourth down touchdown, never an easy thing to do. And also nice job by Shane Clark, just lowering his body and powering forward, giving his team six points. Ball's down, kick is up. This time they'll kick the extra point and they are good here. So Mellows Falls goes up 13 to seven, 301 to play here in the first quarter. We'll take a break. You're watching the YCN Game of the Week. This YCN segment is brought to you by New London Hospital, an affiliate of Dartmouth-Hitchcock. Welcome back. YCN Game of the Week. Jeremy Stout, Andrew Zerhide. Hills Falls kicking off after the touchdown to give them the 13-7 lead. A short kick, and that's fielded at, by Chris Ooh. Frost, to number 22, and he gets to the corner just by his own sideline at, out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Broke free. Looked like he may have a nice little step, but chased down by the special teams man, and it'll still be a nice kick return for the Colonels, and they'll set up in Bells Falls territory at the 40-yard line. Yeah, just like you said, Jeremy, the Colonels need to respond, and Chris Frost just gave them great field position. Nice return by him. It's always demoralizing to the other team if you run back, kick off, see what their offense can do. So Millerick in the shotgun with Carroll behind him. He'll give to Carroll, and he is immediately hit by two defenders in the backfield. Lose a couple yards, and that'll bring up second down. Today's coverage is being brought in part by Echo Communications. Call them for all of your printing needs, and thank all of our advertisers for their support. So Carroll shaking up a little bit as we see him come off the side, onto the sidelines, takes his helmet off. Quick little breather. I'm sure he'll come back in after this one. Second and 11 for the Colonels. And uh, this time goes to Frost. He cuts back left tackle and he's able to make it back to the original line of scrimmage. Maybe gain a yard. That'll bring up third and long. Clock moving inside two minutes here from Hadley Field in Westminster, Vermont. Jeremy Stout, Andrew Zerhide. Our first YCN game of the week from Vermont. Have another one next week. Millerick looking for someone, but then he decides to take off and he's able to gain a few yards, slides forward. And that'll bring up fourth down and about four yards. Maybe a long three. So Andrew, you obviously got to go for it here. No chance that you want to punt it, I wouldn't imagine. And uh, Miller coming back in with the play. He's been a, a good quarterback so far, and he's been able to read the defense, and he's taken off at times. He's, he's thrown the ball at times. Got to make a big play here. Yeah, he does, and should be big for Brattleboro on this drive. He can put some points on the board. Besides that interception, Millerick's been very good and looks like he's calling a timeout. So Millerick and the Colonels want a timeout to talk it over before this fourth down. So inside a minute to play in the first quarter. The Terriers leaving the Colonels 13-7. You're watching the YCN Game of the Week. This YCN segment is brought to you by Bubba's Bar and Grill on Lake Sunapee in Newberry Harbor. Welcome back, YCN Game of the Week. Jeremy Stout, Andrew Zerhide, fourth down and a long three for the Colonels. Millerick in the shotgun. A draw back, surveying the field. He throws it deep, has a man, but is tipped away, and it falls incomplete. Well, it looked like that was number 13, Sam Mellish, defending that pass there, and nice job by him. Staying in the receiver's face. Making a play on the ball when it arrived. Avoided the flag. 
It's a big stop. Very nice defensive effort there, and uh, Kyle DeRosia couldn't come up with the ball, but it was put in, put in the perfect place by Millerick. Defense was in a perfect place, so good play all around. And fortunately for the Terriers, they're able to come away with it. Turnover on downs for the Colonels. The Terriers take over now. First and 10, 52 seconds to go in the first quarter. After stalling on their opening possession, Terriers have now scored two touchdowns on two consecutive drives. Handoff goes up the middle. Ball carrier number 47, Brady Clark, a few yards there, brings up second down. So second and five. Inside 30 seconds probably will be the final play of the first quarter. Logan Coda under center. Handoff once again goes to Clark and he's able to gain a few yards but it looks like he'll be short of the first down marker just by a yard so that'll bring up third and one but that's going to do it here in the first quarter. So. After one on the YCN game of the week, Terriers lead the Colonels 13-7. We'll be right back with second quarter action after this.